Hello everyone, welcome to this Site Guru review. Today I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know about Site Guru. As always, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will also be leaving a discount link in the description so that you can always get your money's worth for Site Guru. So, Site Guru is a SEO website. So essentially SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization and it will essentially help you have people find your website whilst they're searching up. So as you can see, this is the main dashboard. And when you do sign up, there'll be three things that it will start doing. It will, it will do a crawl. It will also do a website audit and then also a link check. Now, these will obviously take a little bit of a while. It usually takes, uh, according to them, about 15 minutes to complete. Um, but I will take you through the things that we can at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and select this website here. You have a little button of which you can select. You can have multiple selected as you can probably tell. Um, all you would need to do is hit new website and import the URL for that website. But for the sake of this, we're going to be using our website here. And as you can see, we have five different things that we can go to along with download and settings. So under overview, this gives us four different tabs. Now we have home pages, timeline and site tree. Home simply tells us what we can do. We can see a home page report. So essentially see what they recommend for you to do with your home page. You can also add a competitor website and learn things that they do in order to increase their search engine optimization and then you can also connect your google account to see performance going down a little bit more we obviously have the url and then we have the structure of the website now you can add more pages if you wish but we're not going to do that you can also choose to delete the site from the website or you can have a little look at this in a different view like this so you obviously have this and if you do prefer this type of layout then it's nice to be able to have you know th that choice of user interface so under timeline it will simply say um all the things that you've basically done to website so far so we've added this to site guru and then we've also it's checked our website um, and it checks it every week so it gives you updates on how you're performing essentially and you can also choose to add things to the timeline if it's something that the website doesn't add automatically pages is obviously the site structure area where you can view the different sections of it and then home i took you through earlier where you can see your reports competitors and google accounts under content, this also takes a little while, so we'll come back to that later. So here we have these settings. Now I'm gonna talk you through what each of these do. So as you can see, we have page speed. In case you don't know what this is, this is essentially, it allows you to check how long it takes from clicking on the link to the website to every asset on the website being rendered in. You can turn that on. Um, you also have crawl scope, allowing them to crawl every single page or just the pages in one folder. So you can choose whether you want it to crawl every single page, or as you can see, one specific place. You can also exclude folders that you don't want it to report or crawl. And you can also set a schedule for your crawls any time or any day that you want. This also allows you to change your URL parameters. If you want your URL to look a little bit neater, you can get rid of them. So as you can see, if your website was yourwebsite.com forward slash page, then if the website originally was yourwebsite.com slash page, and then this little extra bit at the end, which is a parameter, that wouldn't have to be typed in in order for it to access the same area. You can also choose the region of which it calls from, along with the user agents. As you can see, there are five different options. It's completely up to you which one you use, but it defaults to SiteGuru's inbuilt crawler. And then you can also set your crawl speed so it's normal, slow, or extra slow. And then you either delete the site if you choose you don't want it anymore, or go ahead and hit save. Under people, you can see the people that you have got with access to your dashboard. As you can see, all we have at the moment is me, and I have the owner access. But you can obviously manage and invite people to invite other people in your business or company or group to this and then give them elevated permissions. Under checks, you can do all sorts of checks to your website to make sure that it's being all run correctly and that there is no sort of errors that would essentially make the SEO bad. So I'm going to talk you through each one. You have indexability. As you can see, this checks if all the pages are indexable by search engines. So in simple terms, can a search engine actually search it up. Um, broken pages, it just checks if every single site page is working correctly. You can also check if there is a duplicate page. You can change the length of meta descriptions and delete duplicates. You can change the length of titles. You can also change how fast pages load. Uh, this is back to what we were doing where we were checking the page speed earlier. You can also check every link on your website to see if they work. You can check if the home page is only available on one URL, so with or without www. You can also have a little look at the trailing slash which checks if there is only one correct variant of a page and not numerous that you don't need. You can also 
ensure that there is a secure SSL connection. So are people safe browsing your website, essentially? Um, page not found, essentially, is the 404 message giving the right information to the user about what is wrong with the, uh, with the website. You can also check the number of headings on a page. You can check if the site has sitemaps. You can check if the site has a robots.txt file. You can check internal redirects, so redirects inside your website that take you elsewhere. You could also check the alt text to make sure images have the required ones, so they're going to load correctly, etc. You can also check whether your page has or doesn't have internal links. And as you can see below, it says any without it will probably not rank very well. So you do obviously want internal links on your website. You can check if the canonical URLs are used efficiently. You can check if there is structured data on the page or whether it's just all jumbled up. Um, check if there is dummy text, so lorem ipsum. So when you're creating the website, some, you know, some website designers already have have lorem ipsum in text boxes so you know where to type but sometimes people just run over that and completely forget that it's there you can also check if google analytics is installed on every page to make sure that you are getting your analytics for every single individual page of your website and then finally you can check if every page has open graph tags to make sharing the links to your page or other links easier and then you just hit save whenever you're done. And at the top, you can select which website this is for. Here, you can simply link a Google account to connect the Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Fairly self-explanatory. As you can see under here, you can ignore pages if you want. So it just tells you all you need to do is to ignore a page is click ignore this page link in the page report or in the indexability tab. Um, and then you've got a nice little link to that area so that you can ignore a page. And then you can obviously hit yes or no to deleting a site. Okay, so the audit has completed, so now we can go under the content tab. So under content, we simply have the information, uh, whether it's good, sort of okay, or pretty terrible. So page titles, it says, are good. As you can see, it gives us each of our titles and our pages, and it's given them a length uh, of how long they are, and then essentially a tick or a cross as to whether it's good or bad, as you can see they're perfect under meta descriptions we do have quite a lot of errors here so essentially all of them are missing this essentially allows you to see a preview of them a page report and then you can obviously check again once you've made the amends headings allows you to view all of the headings on your page as you can see it tells you how many you've got and whether they are good or bad and then you obviously have the h1 count the actual heading itself and then the page report as you can see under headings, we have the all of the headings that we've got on our page, as you can see. So what it does is it gives us a either a tick or a cross, as I said before. And if it does give us a cross, it tells us why. So you can see this one does not have a heading. It's recommended to have one, at least one, on every single page. And then obviously you've got the same page report, the recheck button, and then the seal headings. So as you can see, we also have the images and alt text that are on our page. So as you can see, this one gives us an amber one. So a red is essentially non-existent. An amber is, there is one, but it could be better. And then you obviously have a tick. So this one says that they do not have alt text. So even though they do actually have a image, there's no alt text. So it tells you which ones they are. And then you can obviously view a page report or check again and there's also a nice download link so that you can send this to people or you can print it out and have it instead of accessing the website each time now under open graph tags you can simply view all of these if you actually click about it gives you a nice little bit of information about them and then it says that we do have some tags that are missing so as you can see it will then give us a tag for them a page report and the check again under technical we do have to enable page speed check so if i go ahead and turn this on we can hit check now and we can then go ahead and click back on our website. Heading to technical, as you can see, it has not checked for any pages yet, but this is where you can view the page speed of your website. Under indexing, this gives you all of the indexes. So as you can see here, if we hover over these, it doesn't give us any information anymore, but as you can see, they are all indexable. Under sitemaps, it obviously just gives us a list of them and it says all of them are listed in your sitemaps. Nice job. So every single page that we've got on our website is also listed in the list of sitemaps. Under canonicals, you can see that these are all correct. They are all self-referencing. They do not reference another aspect of the website. As you can see, my first page, the URL is my first page. Very simple. Under structured data, this can view all of the data that we've got on here. So as you can see, we've got blog, we've got five pages similar to that, that matches that criteria, creative work, person and web page. And as you can see, these are the sort of distribution of those pages for these types. And then we've also got the href langs tab. This obviously does 
not find any. We haven't got any on the website yet, but if yours did, it would simply be searching for them and it would help to target people who speak different languages. And then under the analytics tab, this does take some time, but this is where you can view all of the analytics across essentially every aspect of the website that you have. Under links, you can view the ones that are broken um, internal links and internal redirects. So broken is fairly self-explanatory. Any links on the website that don't work will pop up here. Any internal links will simply pop up in this section here. We all know what they are. I talked you through what they were earlier. And then any internal redirects will simply pop up here. And then under insights is where you can yet again connect your Google Analytics or Google Search Console. And it would look something like this. So your search performance would have a graph going up or down depending on your performance. And then your sessions would have a very similar one but this is how many people are accessing your website um, on certain dates so what you would want to see for both of these is a nice slow incline and then obviously here it will tell you your top performing pages it obviously will tell you the page the page views google clicks top keyword page score etc and then under traffic sources you can see where people are coming to your website from and this can be actually very very interesting you can see whether they're just searching the website up whether it's come from social media email CPC or even a referral and then it tells you your top keywords for a website and then the engagement it also gives you some information such as content that would need attention so you obviously have the pages that kind of low you also have some keywords that don't often get clicked on so they will obviously be dragging your website down in terms of searching and then keywords that are on the rise that you could change your keyword at risk to it also shows you some competing pages so two pages on your website that might have the same keyword in this can cause a difference in clicks as you can see minus 35 percent minus 36 percent and then you also have the low hanging fruit tab which rank on page one and two but are not in the top three so as you can see which position they're in, and then also the score for the keyword in their page name. So say you don't want to have to scroll all the way down in your dashboard to view these pages, all you would need to do is click the relevant one. For example, all of these are what we just went through, and you would easily be able to navigate to any single one of them. At the top, you also have a nice notification panel, so you can see that there's a new SEO report for the website. You also can easily get back to your dashboard alongside having all of these buttons, such as account, manage your subscription, which people are connected, which Google accounts are connected, and then the white label settings. So in case you don't know what this is, this essentially is the name of the company and the logo. So you're able to show the logo on top of the page and also have a name. And then these are all the other aspects that we can do, but these are very self-explanatory. However, I will quickly go to settings and you can change your email address, password, and then all of the preferences so you don't get absolutely bombarded with a load of email and junk that you may not really want. And that is about it. That is Site Guru. So I hope you found this very, very useful. And now we need to answer two questions. So the questions that we need to answer are, do I recommend Site Guru and do I like it? Now, Site Guru does take about 15 to 20 minutes to scan through your entire website, but the way that it lists them in three different tiers, such as working, present but not perfect, and not present, I find really, really useful. A lot of the ones that you'll run into are probably present and present but not fully working and the fact that it allows you to amend these very very easily you don't need to be tech savvy to do it you don't really even need to know how to code this is simply an analytical seo website that allows you to view everything you need to know so i find that incredibly useful one of the features i absolutely love would be the analytics page it's so easy to go to any single section of the website and view what you need to actually see about it um, and i would highly recommend this website to anyone looking for seo and website analytics thank you everyone so much for watching and i will see you in the next one goodbye